Hi, I'm Somer Hackley. Hi, I'm Zen Mack. This is the Art of Search Hiring Manager Series. And these are stories and insights about all things hiring. Well, Zen, thanks for joining me again today. I would love to introduce you to our guest, Laura Merling. I've known Laura for years, and so my past company placed Laura years ago into an executive position. And she's been my biggest client since I went off and launched my own search firm. But I can't even begin to tell you how much I love working with her. Like She's the kind of person, I know I'm trying not to just butter you up, but it's all true. It is all true. She's the kind of person where any candidate I would have interviewing with her for a position they just immediately wanted to work with her. I mean, they just fell in love with the authenticity, transparency, and she just has this like get it done force of nature to her while also being really warm and empathetic and listening. And I know I'll, I'll stop. I know you don't like when people butter you, but, but she's the best. Uh, in terms of background, just, you know, a little bit about Laura. So she is a transformation leader. She's known for delivering billion dollar growth opportunities and her reputation has been built on identifying and forecasting unique market positions. So she's been helping companies to leverage key strengths while shaping unknown markets. And she focuses on people, process and technology. And she leads with a growth mindset and has this belief that people, including oneself, can change their talents and abilities. Well, Laura, it is so great to see you today. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thank you, Somer. Nice to nice to see you again. And Zen, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Wow. Um, well, let's jump right into it, Laura. Um, what would you say are your approaches to hiring? Like how how do you hire? What do you think about? Oh, that's such a good question. You know, uh <laughs> lots of things. As Somer knows all too well. <laughs> Uh, I think a, a couple of things. Um, my approach is um, being really transparent about the company and the role, right? You got to start with the role, but also about the company. Um, the role, if it's new, right? What are the challenges you're going to face? Um, what are the expectations around that role? Um, you know, what are the challenges the company faces, if any, um, whether they're technology or culture or process? Um, things like budget, you know, do we have one? <laughs> do we not? Uh, how much? <laughs> um, you know, expectations for hiring, not just them, but others. It's, it's just, I think one is just being super transparent. And one of the things that I've really enjoyed and, and, uh, Somers kind of got me into doing this is doing a video as part of, uh, the hiring process. So people can, use that to kind of understand who I am and hear directly from me a lot of stuff before they're, you know, before they even start the, the process and then they can decide, well, what else do I need to know that I haven't learned? And I think that kind of leads to the, the second big piece, which I think is, I, I kind of combine two things. I'll say storytelling, but you can't tell a story without a vision. Hmm. And so part of it is ensuring that before I go hire a leadership team, um, that I've got a vision for where we're going, what we're trying to achieve, at least a framing, right? You always want them to help also kind of shape it. Right. Um, but you want at least a, a vision and then a story that you can tell. Um, what What's in it for the team? What are we trying to achieve? What's in it for the company? What the com what's the company trying to achieve? Um, what are the goals? How are we going to measure that success? Um, not just for the company, but how do you measure the success and value for the customer, right? Because it's always about the end customer. Um, and then I think part of the storytelling piece is also making sure you can say what's in the now versus mm. what's in the, I'll call it near and far, kind of like over yeah. a series of horizons, because people want to know, okay, that's great. You're trying to do this this year, but what's the end game? Like, where are you going mm. in, in three to five years? So I'd, I'd probably say that's really it. And it's finding that that good balance. And then probably the last piece of storytelling, I don't know, see, I could ramble forever. The last piece of storytelling is really making sure that anybody else they meet with tells that same story and can tell that same story. Because if you're not all aligned, well, or if we're not aligned, making sure people know, because sometimes it happens before you, yeah. before you get everybody in place, everybody might not be aligned. Um, but making sure that they know, or if people are going to interview, they at least know 
what the role is, how it aligns with their roles or how it aligns with the company's vision. So it's a lot of work, but it's been successful for the most part. Yeah. Well, thank you for that, for the, like just the thoroughness of the answer, because it is a lot and we can probably have five hours of this nonstop and keep going. Uh, but you know, I often think about recruiting and just previous experiences, tying it all the way back to just your own personal stories, right? So do you have one of those tidbits of stories where maybe there was a candidate that you lost or maybe somebody you wanted to hire, they kind of turned it down for a little bit, but, but for whatever reason, you were able to kind of turn that back around and, 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 and landed your hire. Like, do you have a story like that? I have a few, <laughs> I have a few, um, you know, there's a few that got away, um, but, but not fully away, which is, is the way I like to, to say. Um, so yeah, actually it, it's interesting. It was probably about a year and a half ago. Uh, there was a candidate that got away and really it had nothing to do with what we were doing or with the team or where we we're going. It's more about, they wanted a bigger opportunity, something bigger and broader that had come up during the process while we were interviewing them, it was a, we were at a much smaller sized entity, privately held versus a publicly held entity. And so um, we just had a really great conversation. Um, I actually even encouraged the person to take the bigger opportunity um, just because it, it, it was really, really amazing for them. So it, 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 you never wanna do that, but you do, right? You wanna make sure it's a good fit for everybody. And yeah. we agreed to stay in touch and stay connected and what ended up happening was a couple weeks later, um, that candidate ended up actually referring us, um, one of his very good friends, and we ended up hiring that person who's absolutely amazing. And we agreed, so we we interviewed this person, it was phenomenal, and just, you know, they had such a great rapport and relationship, and they were very similar in style and approach, uh, so that was great. Um, and then we've stayed connected, so every couple of months, I still talk to this <laughs> ex-candidate, um, we actually, you know, when we when we broke up from our from our interview process, uh, he said, you know, we're going to stay in touch and we're going to work together at some point in the future. And I said, yes, we are. Uh, and so yeah. what's been funny is we we stay in touch and uh, we actually have started talking about again more recently about when we might work together again and hope that that's very soon. So. You know, it's all about taking those those that get away. You have to, hey, you've got to encourage those people, whatever's right for them, that candidate, as much as you want them, if you help them be successful and you encourage them to take the right thing, you'll it'll pay back in spades. So yeah, the one that wow. got Wow. <laughs> that's a fantastic story. And I think that's a prime example of recruiting done right. Because oftentimes I feel like recruiting done right means, you know, butt in seat. And Sometimes that's not the case at all. It is that long-term relationship that will go on and on and on, and it will be not one hire, but it's hopefully right a, a career-long relationship that results in multiple hires at, at with different kinds of companies and different types of levels and roles. And you just kind of never know, right? Yeah, absolutely. And and just in the relationships that you build, and like like I said, even now we still um, we caught up again a couple of weeks ago, which is why this is like hot off the press, but. Um, <laughs> He, he is great because we were just talking about like lessons learned. What what has he been doing over the last year and a half? What did we achieve over the last year and a half? How's it all working? Lessons learned. What do we do next? Where do you take this? Um, so it's just it's it's an ongoing friendship, partnership, relationship that will always pay back as long as you, you know, do it in the right way. And I don't know. I like to do that. I like to stay in touch with 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 former candidates. Uh, there's actually a couple. There's a there's an there's another candidate that was for a different role, but all in the last year that that we turned down, but yet we've stayed in touch and mm -hmm. the person continues to chat with me every couple of weeks and we stay connected. So it, it's that whole, even if you turn someone down, how do you do it in a way that's like, hey, I'd like to stay in touch. You brought really great skills. This is why we met with you, right? Mm -hmm. That's really important. I yes, love this. I agree more. There's Go such ahead. a great, yeah, there's such a great lesson here that I think is a missed opportunity in so many of these hiring manager candidate interactions. And it's maybe it's not the, it's all about the right person, the right role, the right time. And, it, you know, everything has to align for those three, right? But 
maybe there's a different time or a different role or, and it's all about the long term. And so kudos to you for, you know, keeping in touch. And, you know, that's the absolute opposite of what everyone's talking about, which is ghosting, right? I mean, you're just <laughs> staying in touch with folks that didn't join. And that's, you know, either yeah. it's their decision or your decision. And who knows what will come of that? It would be a really great thing. So thank you for that story. Oh, yeah. I absolutely love it. And I think people can, can learn a lot from that. So um, perfect. Well, Laura, it was so great to have you here today. Thanks for joining us and sharing your wisdom about hiring. Thank you. Great to see you both.